Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we have something really exciting because it's been highly, highly requested. Um, I wasn't actually planning probably to make a video on this dye fluid refractometer. However, I got so many questions over on Instagram. So many people are interested in this that here we are. I sourced a VST refractometer to do some comparisons. This is kind of the gold standard. And I spent basically all of my Sunday, probably five or six hours, experimenting and comparing these two devices. So. Here we are, we're gonna talk about whether I think you should actually purchase this little new refractometer. Before we get going, I do want to quickly mention that Dye Fluid did send me this unit for review. However, as always, that will have zero impact on the contents of this video or the opinions I express in it. If you do want to check out this device and check your local pricing, I will have it linked down in the description below. Just quickly explaining what refractometers are, they're a great way to kind of quantify this highly subjective hobby that we all have, which is coffee brewing. You often hear people talking about something being over extracted or under extracted or a coffee being too strong or too weak. And those are all just feelings really. With a refractometer, you can put a number to those in terms of an extraction percentage or a TDS reading. Those go hand in hand depending on your brew ratio and your recipe. So it's really a great way to quantify and more importantly, look at how differences in your brewing process are actually impacting your final cup in an accurate and numerical way. The downside of this is that refractometers have always been very expensive. This one from VST goes for around $700. So I think that's why a lot of people have gotten really excited for this new compact and relatively inexpensive one from dye fluid. Now, before we jump into all the experiments and the numbers, I just wanna briefly talk about the device itself because it's sort of one of my favorite parts of the dye fluid system. It is surprisingly well put together and integrated. It has a great bright little screen. It is Bluetooth connected to an app and it pairs almost instantly. It is rechargeable by USB-C. It updates very quickly. I was very caught off guard by how well it performed and how clean the integration was for a product in this price range. So that was a good start. Two things that I was kind of disappointed in are the very cheap syringes that are included in this package and the fact that it doesn't have any kind of a carrying case other than a little felt bag. Quickly touching on the app itself, I was again pleasantly surprised at how well it was put together, especially for someone who is a hobbyist at home. Maybe not so much for a professional setting, but that's not exactly who this is targeted at. Depending on whether you're brewing pour over or espresso, the app will run the calculation for you as to where your drink falls within the SCA or NCS suggested zones based on the TDS and extraction percentage. I do find the act of inputting your brew parameters a little annoying. I'd much prefer a keyboard rather than these sliders, but that's probably my one nitpick about the app. Otherwise, it makes the experience really nice in how you can quickly zero, set sample rates, or even store past results. What I really appreciated is that if you don't want to use the app, you do not have to. All the functionalities from zeroing to taking readings can be done without a phone. It can all be done from the device itself standalone. So two big thumbs up for that. I know some people, including myself, hate necessary apps. So all that's great, but it really means nothing unless the dye fluid is accurate or at least consistent. So I ran a lot of experiments against the VST and there is a lot of data here. I highly recommend that you watch it all the way through as all of these experiments kind of paint a picture when they're put all together. If you only watch some of it, you might get the wrong idea. So try to stick through to the end and at the end, I'm gonna summarize who exactly I think this is for and if I think you should buy it. The first thing that I did was I ran seven espresso shots and I tested them back to back on both of these devices. The samples were at room temperature and both refractometers had been zeroed with the same distilled water. And for the first four samples, the dye fluid was an absolute knockout. It hung right in there with the VST. However, on the fifth sample, something a bit odd happened. The dye fluid jumped up to around 0.6% extraction higher and it hung there. No matter how many times I tested, the dye fluid was testing too high. Or was the VST testing too low? I went back, I checked the zeros on both of these devices with the same distilled water. And sure enough, the VST was spot on and the dye fluid was reading that distilled water too high. So somehow it had lost its calibration. I re-zeroed the dye fluid and ran two more tests 
and again, it was spot on. However, that hiccup in the middle is definitely worth noting. The next test that I ran was at pour over strength, again, at room temperature, but this time I just took the same sample and I diluted it each trial. And once again, the dye fluid hung right in there with the VST, this time with no hiccup in the middle. Now it's important to note that those first two tests were under essentially ideal conditions. The samples were at room temperature, which was the exact same temperature as the distilled water that they were both just freshly zeroed with. As you start to get off temperature samples from that zeroing point, refractometers start to misbehave. Any of them will do that, that's the nature of the beast. However, I wanted to test how sensitive each of these devices were. So here is that result. I took samples every 10 minutes from the same drink that was cooling down. And as you can see, the dye fluid is far more sensitive to temperature shifts, starting a whole 9% lower than where it would finally settle. The VST in comparison is far, far more linear, which you might expect from a more industrial product. Out of curiosity, I ran this same test again, and I'm glad I did, because this time we got a similar trend, but as we approached room temperature, the dye fluid again fell out of line with the VST. I checked the zeros again, and once again, the VST was still perfect, and the dye fluid had fallen out of calibration. So, at this point, I think it's quite clear that the dye fluid has two shortcomings, temperature handling and maintaining a calibration across multiple back-to-back -back tests. So now knowing those two things, I decided to put the dye fluid through one final torture test. Now, it's very important to note that this is not the correct way to use a refractometer, but I think it demonstrates where the dye fluid falls behind. I put a warm sample on both of the sensors, and then I measured every 20 seconds as that sample cooled. And as you can see, the dye fluid gets thrown well out of whack. And once it is out of whack, it just doesn't ever get back in step. So I'm not sure what it is about the way the dye fluid reacts to different temperature samples or multiple back-to-back -back samples, but something throws it out of calibration. And for that reason, I definitely can't recommend considering the dye fluid for any kind of commercial or professional use. It just doesn't have the rock-solid dependability of something like the VST. Even though using off temperature samples is not the proper way to use a refractometer, having something that can deal with not perfect conditions is the definition of a professional product like the VST. However, you might be asking yourself, Matt, why don't I just use this properly? Why don't I make sure to zero every time and use perfectly room temperature samples and just kind of baby it a little bit? And if that's what you want to do and that's what you can do for your use case, then I think there's actually a relatively compelling argument to be made for the dye fluid. If you understand that you have to use it in that way, you need to zero every single time, you're only gonna be measuring one or two samples per day, and you know that it could throw a very wrong value at any time. You can normally catch it by rechecking your zero if something seems off, but there is the potential there that was something I never saw from the VST in a full day of use. So to summarize the key takeaways, the dye fluid is not a budget VST. It simply does not have the rock solid dependability, slight temperature handling, or even the ability to maintain its calibration over long tests. What it is, is a surprisingly strong performer under perfect conditions. As you guys saw, it was able to hang with the VST in a variety of those tests. And I think that it's actually a reasonable investment for a hobbyist who understands its limitations. If you just want to measure a few brews per day or maybe experiment with how different parameters are affecting your extractions, then there is some merit to be had for the dye fluid and I will continue to experiment with it in my own setup. So if you want to check out the dye fluid, I will have it linked down in the description below. If you found this video useful, please leave it a like and even consider subscribing if you want to see some more like it in the future. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.